The Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Regulation F format has just begun, and with so many new Pokemon becoming legal, we should discuss some new threats you should be trying out. These range from the new metagame staple of Latias to counter team Landorus, Urshifu, and Tornadus builds, to some sleeper picks like Arachnid, which has insanely good burst damage potential. To learn about these Pokemon and more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I make tons of competitive Pokemon content. But before we get into the video, this channel is partnered with Gamersups. If you want to support my work and get great tasting drinks, you can order Gamersups through my link in the description down below or with code MOXIEBOOSTER at checkout for 10% off. Gamersups is a caffeinated product that I recommend only to my 18 plus viewers, but my link will send you to their caffeine free product section just in case. Every product purchased through my link supports my channel financially, so I'd really appreciate the support. Now back to the video. All right, I mean, I've spoiled the entire list right now, but let's just get into it. We are talking about some Pokemon that you need to be running in Regulation F. Now, this is going to be a mix of newly discovered to be really good Pokemon, uh, as well as some sleeper picks that I think uh, need a little bit more recognition and testing. So yeah, uh, if you guys enjoy this gameplay and time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. Probably already said that in the intro, but let's go ahead and get into it. So first on the list, we're going to talk about Latias. So Latias, you might be wondering, why is Latias good? Well, let's, <laughs> I'm going to have to take you through a journey here. Okay, so why is Latias good? So Latias is good because the format started off, you know, last format, Urshifu and Tornadus, sorry, Urshifu, Rapid Strike and Tornadus were really, really strong. So Game Freak was like, you know what? Have a Raging Bolt which has this new move, Thunderclap, which is a priority electric move that can one-shot both Tornadus and Urshifu pretty easily. So because of that, the Tornadus Urshifu players said, oh man, how do we beat this Raging Bolt guy? This Raging Bolt guy is a menace. So they said, ah yes, please uh, let us add Landorus Incarnate to our teams. Now Landorus Incarnate was already picking up towards the end of the format, but now it's even better with Raging Bolt running around. So yeah, keep that in mind. The, the order goes Tornadus and Urshifu exist, so Raging Bolt comes in to counter them. Then Landorus Incarnate comes in to counter the Raging Bolt, leaving players saying, Oh man, how do we how do we wall out a Landorus Incarnate? It has access to Sheer Force, Life Orb Boosted, Stab Earth Power, as well as Sludge Bomb, which it likes to go Terra Poison because Poison is a very good defensive Terra type for it, but also it doubles as an offensive Terra type because it gives you Stab on your Sludge Bombs now. Keep in mind, Sludge Bomb is a 90 base power move, boosted by 30%, boosted by 30% again, and then boosted by Stab after you Terra. And also they would run like Protect and Substitute, and sometimes they would swap out Substitute for uh, Sandseer Storm. Uh, you know, you, you see different things. So, with all that in mind, players said, oh yeah, Latias is in the game. So Latias is a historically pretty good VGC Pokemon. Um, it's had a couple of showings, but it has 80 HP, 90 defense, 110 special attack, 130 special defense, and 110 speed. It easily outspeeds Urshifu, who, you know, at Jolly Max, it's 163, right? Easily, it can outspeed that guy. It can also outspeed Landris, who hits 168. So Latias players <laughs> decided to run what is usually a Rocky Helmet set that is very bulky and hard to take out. Because of its high bulk, it's really high speed, allowing it to go for recover, access to Tailwind. But above all else, an ability to wall out like three of these Pokemon. Tornadus doesn't do that much damage to it because Bleak Wind is a spread move, you have a lot of HP, and it has a really high spread F stat. Uh, beyond that, <clears throat> Urshifu can't do too much to it because it's, um, here, we'll run the Calc. We'll run the Calc here. So an Urshifu, Rapid Strike, we'll go with a Mystic Water set versus a Latias. That Surging Strikes, Terrastal, in rain, sorry, in rain, 81% maximum. That's like the worst case scenario for these guys. Here, let's turn on Sword of Ruin. Okay, well now there's a chance, but everything dies to that, so it doesn't really matter. Point is, most of the time it's bouncing off of the Latias like it's doing nothing, and then you take Rocky Helmet damage, and then guess what? You get one shot back, or just outsped in one shot, by this thing's new signature move, that or newly buffed signature move, rather, Mist Ball. Now, Mist Ball last generation, I forgot how it worked last gen. Let's let's look at the old stats real quick. So we'll go to uh, national decks. No, not national decks. We'll go to gen sword and sword and shield. Yeah, 
Sword and Shield, Yu Yu, Latias, Mist Ball. So Mist Ball used to be 70 base power, 100 accuracy, and 50% chance to lower the target special attack set by one. So no one ra no one ran it. It wasn't worth it. Now it's just better psychic because Mist Ball is currently a whopping. I could click the right thing. Oh my god, a whopping 90. Five base power with a 50% chance to lower the target special attack step by one. That's really strong. That's a really strong move. Um, not only under Tailwind do you like allow Latias to live ridiculous special attacks like Specs um Specs Moonblast and like Specs Shadow Ball from Fluttermane if you get that drop, but also you're just one-shotting the the Urshifu is running around. And of course, Ice Beam is gonna be a clean one-shot uh versus a Landorus Incarnate since it is times four. Super effective, as we can see right here. Yep. Ice Beam 109 to 129. And if they want to Terra Poison, guess what? Bam, you still have a really high chance of getting one shot. Uh, or at least, you know, close because 83 to 102. Uh, yeah, that is, it's a really strong option. Like this thing is really crazy. And it has the results to back it up. We've seen a few Latias running around. Uh, there's a team going around uh, Landorus, King Gambit, Ogre Pond, Water, Latias. Like that's kind of a core going. Uh, we see it here. Uh, we also see it again down here at 10th and a few times scattered throughout this top cut uh, in this like over 700 person tournament. We saw Latias. So that is something you need to keep in mind. It is a great Pokemon. I highly recommend you guys try it out. It's a really fun one to pilot too. Uh, and yeah. So next up, all my stall players. What's going on? How are my stall players doing today? Is anyone a fan of Registeel? Is anyone a fan of Iron Defense Body Press? Okay, so here's the deal. Reggie Steel has had this set since um has had this set since generation eight. However, it gets better in generation nine because it has access to Terra, but also it is able to always click heavy slam since there's no Dynamax now. If you don't know Dynamax blocked waste uh, weight based moves. So now Reggie Steel <clears throat> is able to do quite a few things. Uh, if you're facing off versus a Landorus Incarnate. You know, tough luck. There's a good chance you get one shot. However, there's also a chance you live. And if you Terra, yeah, you definitely live. And that Heavy Slam doesn't do too much, but it is an option. You know, just, you know, that's the thing you can do. Uh, but beyond the Landers is running around, you know, another threat to this guy is, of course, going to be Urshifu. You can live the close combat. Surging Strikes is a little bit of an issue. But if you get up to enough defense, you reach a point where your body presses are doing like a ton of damage because it's coming off a of base 150 defense. You have a chance to one shot Urshifu Rapid Strike with four HP uh, with your body press at plus four. That's only two, two iron defenses, which is very easy to get off considering this guy's stats, the partners surrounding it. And yeah, obviously, um, Registeel really appreciates uh, Rillaboom as a partner because Rillaboom will be able to, uh, here, because Rillaboom will be able to grant it grassy terrain recovery with grassy surge like that's obviously a very good tool it also appreciates you know incineroar because incineroar has intimidate and fake out just stuff to keep it alive so we've seen uh reggie steals pop up here and there throughout the format uh it's currently a little bit under explored i think most people lean too hard into the pure stall archetype uh you probably just want to have like a a reggie steel mode on your team which is hard to do uh considering the pokemon it requires we can see here one of the more successful ones was ran by desu uh, in this tournament who got ninth and yeah safety goggles Cresselia, lunar blessing like a really good partner for this guy um obviously you know Cresselia is uh one of the few pokemon that can actually threaten landers uh by walling it out more or less you don't care about the earth power uh the sludge bomb should kind of bounce off you if they're not tarot and you can threaten it back with like an ice beam along with re uh, healing the rest of the team with lunar blessing and keeping reggie steel alive with that so yeah uh, those are really like, I think that's one of the better ways to run it. Just have the option. You don't want to use it as your win con in every single game because of course, Urshifu is running around. Sacred Sword is a very common move now, uh, on Chen Pao. Uh, so <laughs> there are ways of getting around this Mon that, uh, you have to deal with before it can be a clear win condition. So not leading into it every single game is going to be for the best if you want to play Registeel. But beyond that, I really like the Mon and I think it's a, a really solid pick right now. Next up, I'm a little biased here, but Araquanid. Another sort of sleeper pick, I think a lot of people can recognize the damage this guy's capable of, but they don't realize just how ridiculous it actually is. So the main issue with Araquanid is it is faster than Amoongus, so it is susceptible to that. 
and it kind of needs Mystic Water and Terra Water to function, so you need to have some kind of support for it to avoid it going to sleep uh, under Trick Room. But if the opponent doesn't have an Amoongus, good luck. Like, it actually becomes like a good luck, have fun game, you know? <laughs> uh, so let's let's do an example. So Araquanid, right? Let's say you're using just 252 attack, 252 speed, or defense, standard, adamant nature, mystic water, water bubble. So let's add up all these multipliers. So your main move is going to be um, mystic, not mystic water, it's going to be liquidation. Uh, however, you do still have leech life in case you need to hit like something like uh, Ogre Pond Wellspring, which technically Ogre Pond Wellspring uh, is immune to this move. So yeah, it is immune to... um you know, liquidation, so you will have to leech life it. That is a clean two shot, very nice. But, but, let's let's put this into perspective. Rillaboom. Assault Vest Rillaboom, max HP for defense versus Adamant Terra Water Liquidation. It's about a two shot, and if the rain is active, which I highly suggest you run this thing with rain, it becomes very close. In my, in my personal team, I not only have rain, but I also have helping hand on the rain setter. It's possible to one shot this resisted mon. <laughs> it's actually kind of ridiculous. Versus like a flutter main. Let's say you're facing like choice specs, bulky flutter main, right? Um, here we'll go with just bulky booster speed, and we'll add a we'll add a choice specs. Why not? So you're facing like bulky choice specs flutter main. No rain. No helping hand, no terrestrialization. Liquidation is still a very clean one shot. It is that strong of a move. At minus one, you're still doing a ton of damage to this thing. And the reason is all the multipliers. So liquidation is 85 base power. Mystic Water gives you a 20% boost on that. Water Bubble gives you a two times boost on that. Um, your Stab gives you a 50% boost on that. And then Terrastal <laughs> gives you, turns that, you know, the 1.5 into a two times. So it is four times 1.2, which is what? Uh, that's 4.8 times multiplier on the move collectively. Yeah, this thing is crazy. Like, um, I like running it next to Frigograph because one of one of its biggest weaknesses is, of course, uh, fake out and priority spam and Grassy Glide Rillaboom is a huge threat to this thing. Normally, you can eat a Grassy Glide pretty well. You can eat everything really well. It's bulk's really nice. Uh, almost 70 HP, 132 speed F, 92 defense. So, like, you know, this Moonblast is doing uh, anywhere from a little under 50% to a little over. And then Assault Vest Rillaboom, um, you know, if you're not terrestrialized, you do actually just tank an Adamant Wood Hammer with 116 attack. And it becomes a little bit more iffy when they're 252, you know. Uh, you, <laughs> But you do naturally live that. And then you can recover off with like two leech lives. So yeah, Grassy Glide also eat pretty well. But once you terrestrialize, that's when like the Grassy Glide becomes a threat. Uh, you know, max attack, adamant Grassy Glide in terrain uh, is going to be a, you know, very high, very high amount of damage. So you have to be very careful with this mon. But yeah, uh, Araquanid solid into most of the things that are meta at the moment. If we just take a look at like the top used Pokemon, Fluttermane one shot, Incineroar one shot, Rillaboom. You, you know, you can hit it with Leech Life. And if you're, like, prepared like I am, you will one-shot it. Urshifu Rapid Strike is an interesting one. Um, because it is, like, a very bulky water type. So if you go with, like, just a 4 HP one, we'll go with, like, Adamant Nature too. Uh, the other benefit of Araquanid, it is, it is an Urshifu Rapid Strike switch in. Surging Strikes will do 46% maximum uh, to Araquanid with Adamant and Mystic Water. And if they're, like, not Mystic Water, let's say they're, like, Choice Scarf. Then you can see the Surging Strikes is doing 39%, 99% uh, chance to 3 hit KO. And if you have like any kind of recovery, it's it's whatever, you know, just Leech Lab it. Uh, close Combat, you know, guaranteed 3 hit KO. These are very nice things for Araquanid to be able to switch in on. Uh, it also does fairly well into Chen Pao. You do have to be careful though. Uh, Adamant Chen Pao, uh, the Sucker Punch will actually hurt quite a bit. Uh, anywhere from 50 to 60%. But that Ice Cool Crash, that Ice Spinner, that Sacred Sword, that's those are dollar store attacks, you know. And you actually kind of you kind of like when Chen Pao's in the field because its partners get a lot weaker. <laughs> I mean, your leech life already is like almost a one shot. Your liquidation is a one shot versus Chen Pao, but you know, just being able to 
uh, smack the partners of liquidation with a sort of ruin active. It makes it so you don't even need your own. It's very nice. I very much enjoy using this Pokemon uh, on my current build. Yeah. Next up, let's discuss Metagross. Now, Metagross is a bit of an underappreciated Mon at the moment, but a lot of people do understand the power that it holds. Um, I haven't seen a lot of Metagross in like tournament top cuts, but uh, there are a couple in this one. So one example is this one run by uh, Descos, hold on, Desconocido, Desconocido. Uh, and they're running it with a Chen Pao, which I believe is the correct way to run a Metagross in this metagame, um, mainly because of the heavy damage output it has. And when I say heavy, I'm speaking very literally. So Metagross, just a standard assault vest set. It now has access to Heavy Slam, which it did have access to in Generation 8. The only issue is, like I said, Dynamax made it so uh, you couldn't click it all the time, so people didn't run it. You're one-shotting a Chen Pao, and I know I I I'm, I don't think you guys realize how heavy and powerful a move has to be to one-shot Chen Pao with Heavy Slam, because <laughs> Chen Pao is actually pretty heavy. Let's look at uh, Iron Hands. Iron Hands actually runs Heavy Slam itself. It's Heavy Slam only does like 70% to a Chen Pao maximum because it's so low base power. But Metagross, since it has stab on its, it doesn't really care. As a matter of fact, you can see it's still only 80 base power going into the Chen Pao. So if we were to take like a Fluttermane, something like super, 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 super light, you can see the max power of Heavy Slam is 120. But because you're a Metagross, you're Steel type, you do actually get stab on that meaning that it is not 120, it is 120 plus 50%, which half of 120 is 60. That means that 120 plus 60 is 180 base power heavy slam off of 135 base attack. That's really strong, even resisted Pokemon. Even resisted Pokemon like Incineroar, which, just so you know, can't intimidate the Metagross. It's switching in on a heavy slam and taking 30 to 36%. If Sword of Ruin is active like it should be, 40%. The Sacred Sword from the partner uh, will just like straight up one shot it now so yeah isn't that something uh beyond that uh metagross is a pokemon that puts out enough pressure where uh opposing incineroars and rillabooms will be tempted to go for a fake out into it because they say oh i want to keep my fluttermane alive let's fake out the metagross and deal with the consequences later which they will deal with the consequences later since <coughs> like i said incineroar can't intimidate a metagross stomping tantrum stays its usual base power but guess what? It just got flinched. That means it doubles in base power. That Incineroar now has to eat a 100. It's 75 base power, which gets doubled. A 150 base power stomping tantrum, which does 136 to 161. I don't care what defensive switch you have. I don't care what you try to switch into. Let's say you have an Iron Hands in the back and go, oh, Iron Hands, surely you can eat this hit. Guess what? Double base power? Maybe. Maybe. If it has any chip, it's still going to do a ton, dude. And with Sword of Ruin active, nah, forget about that. You're dying. This Mon is super, super good. It has a couple of terrors it can run, uh, but as a Steel Psychic type, there are only a few weaknesses you need to be concerned of. You know, Dark type moves, uh, Ghost type moves, Fire type moves. A lot of those are covered by two Terra types. One of them is Water. Water, I believe, is one of the better ones. However, with Rillaboom running around and Iron Bolt running around, you might be tempted to actually go for something that's a little bit more popular at the moment, which is Dragon. Dragon, of course, is only weak to Fairy and Ice and Dragon. As a Steel type, it is not likely you'll be targeted by a Fairy type or Dragon type or an Ice type. So, uh, <laughs> and if you do, if you, if you do get targeted by them, you have Priority Bullet Punch. So you just brrrr, and then they drop. So it's a very nice, um, there's, a, there's a lot of synergy with uh, those two typings. And yeah, like I said, Fluttermane, even like bulky Fluttermane, like the bulkier Fluttermanes, um, that run like a lot of defense here, 212, 132. That bullet punch is still doing a ton, sort of ruin active. You know, there's a chance you one shot it. Metagross is not a Pokemon to sleep on. Uh, I think you should really consider it for your, you know, whatever team you're running. And it, it works well with a ton of Pokemon. It like runs the assault vest and it doesn't have reliable recovery. So why not run it with a Rillaboom? You know, yeah, fake out. Uh, why not run it with a little bit of speed control? It can hit 107 speed pretty easily. Uh, and maybe not too easily, but easily enough. Actually, you only really need to hit 103. So yeah, and then yeah, you're still pretty bulky, you know, four HP, four defense, assault vest. You can start out speeding things and hitting them with like heavy slam under tailwind. That's pretty good. And it's a very bulky mod. 80 HP, 130 defense, 90 special defense. Yeah, like uh, this thing's not getting scratched super easily. Next up, Tapu Fini at home, AKA Pre Marina. Now Pre Marina is an interesting mod. Um, 
it historically is good in formats without Tapu Fini because of how well it can take on Urshifu Rapid Strike. We're going to take this very basic spread here. This very basic Cream Arena spread. And put it up versus an Urshifu Rapid Strike. You can see that Adamant Mystic Water is pretty close to always two shot. Or no. 0.4% chance to 2 it KO. There's a really high chance it just doesn't KO you. Uh, to which you can just reply with a Moonblast and then they drop. But the main draw of Tapu Fini is its ability, Liquid Voice, which turns all sound-based moves into water-type moves. This can do a couple of things that are pretty interesting. One, Hyper Voice becomes basically better Surf. Surf is 90 base power, I believe, is it? Yeah, but it hits your partners. Um, Hyper Voice will not hit your partner. Um, not Hyper Beam, Hyper Voice, and it will also um, hit through substitutes. So that is uh, very important. Paired with the Throat Spray item, it will give you a boost your special attack stat, meaning that you can uh, go for then a boosted Hyper Voice, a boosted Moonblast, or a boosted Ice Beam. Uh, as Moxie boosted, I do enjoy boosted moves. Uh, but the other really cool thing about it that Liquid Voice can do is it's all sound-based moves. There are a few sound-based moves that this thing has access to. Alluring Voice, you know, that's a pretty interesting one. 100% chance to confuse the target and uh, that had a stat rise this turn. Maybe not the best move since uh, it relies on the opponent setting up, but it's interesting. Uh, the other cool move that it gets is Psychic Noise. That'll also become a Water-type move, but it's a Water-type move that will prevent the opponent from healing for two turns. Now, I can't think of a lot of Pokemon that this would be really good into, but Leftovers Heatran is what I'm thinking of. And also, like, if the opponent has, like, you know, any kind of uh, Leftovers equipped on any Pokemon, like a Citrus Berry, uh, Psychic Noise is actually really nice for hitting Pokemon that run the Citrus Berry, like Incineroar. And Incineroar would be able to possibly get 3-hit KO'd by, like, Hyper Voice if it had a Citrus and, like, a lot of special defense. But if you go for Psychic Noise, then you knock it down to 50%. It's heal blocked. It can't actually eat the berry. And then the second psychic noise picks it up. And the final really interesting thing is Parish Song. So Parish Song will become water type. And that means one very interesting thing. Water absorb Pokemon will not be affected by it. You could say this is bad, but if you want to run it next to like an Ogre Pond Wellspring, that means that like, you know, you can go Ogre Pond Primarina in the end game and then you're positioned much better because your Ogre Pond won't have the Parish Song applied to it. But with other people running Ogre Pond, maybe it could be kind of bad. Uh, it depends. It depends on the context, but it's uh, another interesting tech that Premier can run. And it's a good water type. There are a lot of really good water types, but as far as special water types go, uh, Premier is pretty high up there. The final one, and this is entirely because I've been running this guy recently. He's a little nuts. I think he's going to pick up um, as things go on. But Iron Boulder currently extremely undervalued in my opinion 120 attack 124 speed i think this is like the one set you need swords dance mighty cleave substitute sacred sword there are very few pokemon that can deal with this set with a sword of ruin shen pao next to it for one mighty cleave and i'm we're going to release a full video showcasing this guy tomorrow um but mighty cleave 95 base power, 100% accurate rock type move that has never existed in the game prior to this gen. 100% accurate physical rock type move that is like high base power. You know, you have like Accelerock and like other weird niche things. But, you know, we have Ivy Cudgel for Rock Ogre Pond and we have Mighty Cleave for Iron Boulder now. Both of which were introduced into Generation 9. Hitting through Protect is stupid. We've known this with Urshifu. Urshifu hitting through Protect is very stupid, but this guy having Stab Rock to hit through Protect, that means that Pokemon like, you know, Fluttermane, a Pokemon where you have to wonder, is it Choice Specs or is it running Protect? In Tournament, not so much. On Ladder, yeah, you have to wonder. Um, versus a Iron Boulder, I, I, um, I'm happy to tell you that it doesn't matter what set they are as long as you're faster with your booster speed your um, Mighty Cleave will be doing a lot of damage that they cannot afford. If they're a low bulk Fluttermane, Jolly, uh, Jolly Mighty Cleave has a 68% chance to just one-shot it. And like I said, you should be running Swords Dance on this guy. At plus two, it's over, dude. Raging Bolt, right? <coughs> Raging Bolt, a bulkier Pokemon, you know, let's do 252-4. At plus two, that Mighty Cleave is doing 71 to 84% with the Sword of Ruin. Forget about it. You're one-shotting that guy a lot of the time. Even like 
bulkier mons like uh, Urshifu don't like eating the resisted hit at plus two with the Sword of Ruin active. You're going to be doing uh, 57 to 68. Of course, you will also be running Sacred Sword, which is another option. However, um, you know, Mighty Cleave avoids the possibility of them going for Protect. Now, this thing can tech. It is a Psychic type, right? Like it could run Zen Headbutt, but a lot of movesets, I think, are better off without Zen Headbutt because while it does like allow you to hit poison types and stuff, Rock is probably fine. Hitting things for neutral at plus one or plus two with this thing are, is going to be more than enough. Um, and you'd prefer Sacred Sword because as a rock type, uh, a rock psychic type more specifically, you get walled by Steel Mons. So having that Sacred Sword to beat things like, you know, for example, our friend Reggie Steel, um, like our friend Reggie Steel, that Sacred Sword at plus two is going to be doing 59 to 71. Uh, and yeah, that is uh, that is a very important calc in my opinion, you know, just being able to ignore defense boosts. Uh, obviously, Don Dozo is picking up again. However, <coughs> I wouldn't say that this is the best way to beat Don Dozo. Yeah, Sacred Sword hits pretty hard, Sword of Ruin, you know, hits pretty hard, 25. But <clears throat> with, uh, what was it called? With um, Unaware, it's going to ignore your boosts. So even if you're at plus two. You know, while the Sacred Sword would normally do 50 to 59, you know, if they're unaware, they're just going to be like, eh, I don't really care. You know, I'm, you're still going to be doing 20, 29% or 23% maximum. But regardless, I do think this Pokemon is super undervalued. Um, you know, I'll give you a little sneak peek of the team that's going to be shown tomorrow. I already showed it in a different video. Uh, but this guy, Deploy the Rock. <laughs> just running it next to like some kind of like redirection, some speed control, good stuff's Pokemon. You're going to get a lot of value out of this guy. You're going to be able to smack everything. They can't defend versus it. And because you put out so much pressure, it's super easy to get a substitute off. So yeah, those are my thoughts on just some Pokemon. I think you guys should really look into, uh, you know, new Pokemon that you should be using on your regulation F team. The latter just dropped today. So go ahead and try these guys out. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed, you know, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.